Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Devesh Bhatija, and are you all ready to experience maths today? That miniature me is saying that. Do you really want to see what I actually decided? When I was a kid, the first question that came to my mind every time when I was in school, why do we need math? That is a burning question that everyone sitting out here, I'm sure, at some point has had that. I actually felt that most of the times we don't really experience math. I'm a math storyteller, so I thought why not start today's discussion with a story during my school days. This was in grade eight, and I was having a discussion with a couple of people. I loved the idea of having a business. I loved the idea of actually, you know, doing something independently. So I said, why not start a business when I was in school? I started selling notebooks, pens, and perfumes. Now, when I was starting to do this, I realized that notebooks, I was buying at roughly about 12 or 13 rupees, but I was selling them for 20 rupees. I started buying pens for about 2 rupees, but I was selling them for 5 rupees. I was buying perfumes for 50 rupees and selling them for 100 rupees. So technically, according to you, anybody sitting out here, <coughs> which one do you think was the most profitable venture for me? Books, pens or perfumes? Anybody? Pens. Logically, it was almost 150% because I was buying at 2, selling at 5. But if I set down a target for myself that I wanted to earn 1000 rupees on one single day by selling all of this, I would have to build an equation, right? I would have to build, I can sell certain number of perfumes. Can I sell 10 perfumes in one day? Would that be a possibility? On a good day, maybe. On a good day, it may not be. I may need to have a balance. So I had to say X number of perfumes, Y number of pets, and X or Z number of books. I had to make a proper equation. And only when I made that equation, I was in a position to actually reach equal to 1000. When I started experiencing math, I started realizing that yes, there's a lot of math involved in our day-to-day -day experiences. But all my friends, they always said, math is not my cup of tea. Math is something which we usually find it very difficult. So I thought, why not I ask all of you, what is your relationship with math? And in order to make this a little more interesting, I've made a small attempt, Mero Nepali Ali Alicha, but I've tried to ask a question. Let's see if you're able to answer that for me or no. How many of you feel that you like math? Put your fingers up with one number. Second option. Pretty neutral with the subject. We go with the third one. And I can see a lot of hands coming up already for the third one. So when we talk about math, what is the first thing that we look at it? What is the first perception of math? It's all about numbers, calculations, solving sums, memorizing formulas. But do we really know that math as a language which we all use, but we all misinterpret it? The biggest challenge for math as a subject is that we only and only treat it as a calculation tool. The challenge for that is that we feel if you know how to do 4 plus 4 is equal, equal to 8, I've nailed it. No. 4 plus 4 is going to be remain equal to 8 no matter which part of the world you go. But that 8 answer could be different for you and could be different for me. The interpretation. Math has two parts. One is number literacy and one has number interpretation. The way we look at math, it is very, very important. And I wanted to share that how interpretation and number literacy actually happened in my life. A couple of years ago, when I started this venture called Unmath, we wanted to try and teach children math in a very different manner. We wanted to make them feel that math is such an easy process or a natural skill set. In order to achieve that, I started playing a game with a child. And this experience actually changed my mindset. What happened was this child, he was in grade six and he was studying, uh, he had already finished his grade six and he was not at all interested in attending a math camp. I mean, typically everyone, when you talk about a math camp, you think about calculations, solving sums. So we called him, you were playing a game and he was getting bored. I said, why don't we do something else? I asked him, have you learned something called as integers? And he said, no, I haven't learned integers ever. He gave a very blank face. 
I knew that he's done that in his school, but he's probably forgotten about it, which is very normal in today's day and time. So what we decided was, we thought, might as well let's play a game. So we put down a few markers like you see out here. We picked up a piece of paper, rolled it into a ball, and we started throwing at them. While throwing, we realized that this child is not really taking the game seriously. I said, if you don't throw it properly, and if you miss any of the markers, you'll get minus five. His score was minus two. He threw the ball, he missed it. He immediately said his score was minus seven. And I said, how did you get the answer? He said, it's logic, minus two, minus seven. I mean, if I get a minus five after minus two, I'm obviously bound to reach minus seven, right? So I said, if I tried explaining this to you five minutes back, you were not able to do it. But now, just because it was a game and because it was presented as if you were going to win or lose a game, you were able to answer that. And that is where I realized that the way we interpret math changes the whole ball game. I'm sure all of you, all of you love to play games out here? Yes? If you do like to play games, can I get a big hands up from everyone? Yes? Now, let's talk about a very simple game, Uno. We all have played Uno in our household. Just what basic cards, right? What really makes the game an effective game or an, you know, an amazing game for every household to have that? Is it because they have numbers on it or is it because the rules that have actually been created? What do you think? Is it the numbers or the rules? Rules, right? So when you think about it, the entire game of Uno was designed using math. Can you even imagine that a game like Uno, which is going to be primarily using only numbers, the first thing that you see in math, but everything around that was designed in a certain manner that to make you feel that yes, math is literally everywhere. My only and only request for every child sitting out here, for one, for one small second, think about one favorite game of yours and tell me that do you really think that game would be possible without using math? Without the design, without the concept, without the way it is packaged before, without the way it is actually, you know, the materials used in it, every single aspect is designed by math. We as children of school children or even adults for that matter, we personally feel that math is not just about calculations. We need to really experience it and to experience that, the way we visualize it makes it very, very important. Now, when I spoke to you earlier as well, I mentioned about the fact that we have number literacy and number interpretation, right? So number literacy is all about the calculation. You guys are doing a fantastic job. Everyone knows how to calculate. You, even if you don't know, you have chat GPT, you have your Excel sheets, you have calculators, you're doing a brilliant, brilliant job out there. But what is the most important need is after you've got that answer, four plus four is equal to eight, what do you do with that eight is what we need to learn. The way we present that, the way we actually identify that, every single thing, the way we are actually seated out here, the way all the cameras that are pointed at us, the angles, the minute details that is there right in front of us, every single bit has math involved in it. You are not going to be able to imagine a life without mathematics. When we are talking about this, one of the most important things that I always visualize when it comes to math is that I personally feel the way we present the subject, the way we kind of, you know, uh, teach it in the school, it's taught as if you need to complete an equation or you need to complete a certain task altogether. Why? Because you want to get marks. I know that math is important to get good numbers. I know that math is the subject where you can score full marks. But do you really think as a child when you start solving math, don't you want to question at times that where am I going to use this? Why am I going to use this? When you start doing this, the most important aspect is for you to realize that every part of math teaches you to solve a problem. You know, when you use the word in your math textbooks, there's something called as word problem. That itself scares you because that makes you feel that, oh my God, am I going to be able to solve a problem or no? I don't know. But what is going to be very important is that the way you visualize that and the way you interpret that question, the way you decode that, it's very important for us to see that every little aspect that what you are actually, let's imagine even these ID cards that we use, every little bit has math in it. We just need to start changing our perception and the way we look at it. Now, I'm going to ask you a very simple thing. Many a times, 
as you know school teachers as education as educators we all try to focus on one very important aspect by giving real life examples of math right now i'm going to ask you a very simple thing that imagine if there was no math imagine if there was no math at all in a movie theater there was no math let's just visualize that for one second there'll be no show timings there'll be no accurate po- amount of popcorn available the re- the way the movie is going to be presented to you you will not be seeing it properly and probably you can visualize or you can agree with me on something like this our life is going to be something like this you can see there'll be roads which will not make any sense you'll have food which will not have proper proportion in it you'll have a city which has no proper signs in it can you imagine an aircraft who will not have math in it can you imagine an aero an, an entire airport not having math in it or your cars next time when you think about why do i need math that's not the right question to ask the right question should rather be to answer the question that okay hey if i don't know about this particular math or i don't know how is math going to be used out here pick up a small thing around you or an important aspect around you and say if there was no math involved out here what would happen that is going to be the key differentiator for you to understand that am i early going to really think about math like this like in only terms of solving a sum no i want to look at math from a complete different perspective i want to make sure that come what may when i look at any particular object if there's no math what is going to happen the most beautiful part of math it allows you to come up with various types of solutions for the same problem it's upon you how you choose that so when i started my conversation with you guys i said i wanted to share i wanted you to experience math and the best way to experience math according to me would be to visualize things in a much more different manner and that is to ask the right question asking that if there was no math involved out here what would be the impact i remember several times walking into a street and just imagining that in this street if there was no math what would be the impact how would the roads look like how would the entire traffic management look like every little aspect of us is only about the power of visualization for centuries we've only and only looked at math as a calculation tool we've been looking at it as if somebody who's it's an elite club of people who are very good with numbers and very good with number crunching but is that what we really want no right we all need to understand that why do we need math we're moving in a very different direction today in today's day and age of ai wherein calculations are done in few seconds you take a picture and then the sum is solved for you as human beings you are not going to be only and only dependent to solve sums but you're going to be dependent on actually decoding the entire answer or decoding or interpreting that how are you going to use this to make a decision the most important part of math as a skill is to actually make a decision or actually dis- create a complete new thing called as design thinking we've used this word design thinking a lot in entrepreneurship or we've used the word of decision making a lot but the base of this is going to be math as math or math tools allow us to decide that will this really make sense or will this not make sense can i create something which will solve a problem that is what we can actually look at math as a team of people who really are interested about learning math i would request you just one small thing as my last note before i wrap up please pledge that once you leave this room you're going to ask at least one uh, once a day you're going to ask one question imagine if there was no math in this chair or in this table or in this television or in this mobile phone if there is no math what would happen that will be convincing enough for you to know that why do you need math that's all from my side thank you